While working on my boat on this nice rainy day, I got a notification on my phone. Google Opinions Rewards, new survey available. Maybe this will give me just enough money to buy another hummingbird map. Now I'm gonna leave it up to you guys in the comments below. Is this getting free hummingbird maps? Cause it does take a few seconds for me to fill out these surveys to get money and then takes time to save up the money to buy the new maps. And people say time is money. However, this does not cost me anything to do. You could even do it on a phone that doesn't have service or a tablet. Now the Google Opinion Rewards app is actually made by Google. And I'll show you what this survey says. So at first it has a really long disclosure talking about, you know, what the survey's about. This survey is basically where have I been lately? So, okay, got it. Which of the following places have you visited recently? And it lists one, two, three, four, five different businesses. And on this particular survey, I haven't been to any of them. So I can select none of the above and then next. And then it thinks for a second, gives me a big old thank you. And this one just gave me 13 cents. And it tells me that my credits will expire a year from now. So you can save these up for almost up to a year. And now my Google Play balance is $24.96. Most of the maps are $19.99 plus tax on the Hummingbird app. And I've been saving since September 21st of 2019 to give you an idea of how long it takes to get this kind of balance. Sometimes it goes faster. Now the next thing you're probably wondering, how in the world am I using a Google Play balance to buy Hummingbird maps? Hummingbird has an app called Fish Smart. And this basically takes the map and downloads it to your phone. So you can use your phone to look at a lake. These maps are definitely better than Navionics. Navionics misses stuff in the water. I know several spots where there's a defined creek bed where you have, you know, the topography is going like this and then it dips down and dips back up. On Navionics, it looks like it's just a flat. But on the hummingbird maps, you can actually see the actual creek channel that's underwater. So they are definitely better maps and they're more expensive than Navionics because you're buying each individual lake. Unless you're doing it like me and getting them for free using the Google Opinion Rewards app. Now you do need to have a chart select account which you can actually set up through the app. I have one because I've got several maps that I own now. I'm logged in and on here has chart view, chart select maps, my data, networks and update, self-help, register to your hummingbird. So I'm going to go to chart select maps. I'm going to go to state and I'm going to look for Tennessee. And sometimes it takes a moment for it to load the maps. As you can see here, it only shows one map that I own right now and nothing else. In reality, I own three maps. Okay, that took a little bit for these to get loaded up, but there's a whole bunch of maps on here. And I know my phone screen is probably not showing up too well on the camera. I actually tried showing it directly to the camera while looking on the back and it was just a big blur. So you just have to go with what I'm saying. So what I'm gonna do, I'm looking for Tennessee. Uh, it has like Center Hill, Cherokee, Cordell Hall, Dale Hollow, Douglas. And I'm going to look for Teleco. Teleco, 1999. So I'm going to buy Teleco. And to do that, I have to tap on the gold 1999. And then it says purchasing. And it shows my Google Play balance. It shows 1999 plus tax. One tap buy. And as you can see, this is actually going through the Google Play Store. So you're buying this with the Google Play balance from the Google Opinion Rewards app. Wants to verify the purchase. Processing. Payment successful. I earned some play points too. Now the golden 1999 has turned into a download button. So I'm going to click on download. And this thing is 147.4 megabytes. That's not incredibly big, but I do know this will take a little while to actually download. Now, while this is downloading, I'll tell you what you need on your fish finder for this to work. Your fish finder needs to be a networked fish finder from Hummingbird. 
So I have a Helix 7 G2N. The N represents networking. So G2N, G3N, the more expensive units like the Solex, they might have this built in as well. So you would be able to transfer maps from the phone to the unit. And it does it over Bluetooth, which means it takes a really, really long time. Bluetooth file transfer is slow, but it's what we got to work with. And this is about halfway done while I'm talking to you guys, talking about what you need with the fish finder. So I'm going to jump in the boat and start up the fish finder. All right, the first thing I've done here is unplugged my transducer. I've been having problems with it not working. So I'm going to have to replace that sometime in the future, but I figured you don't want to burn it out. You're not in the water. And then turn the unit on. Now with me using a GoPro, you're probably not going to see the screen too well, but I'm going to try the best I can. Now one of the first things that I need to do is pair my phone with the actual unit. I've reset this a couple of times due to the transducer issues. So my phone is no longer paired with this unit. Now to pair the unit, hit menu twice. You scroll over to accessories, go to phone Bluetooth, hit right. Bluetooth says off, hit right. Now Bluetooth is on. There we go. It finally picked it up. I had to delete the old connection off the phone and then it automatically showed up. So I got Helix 7 Chirp SI GPS G2N. So now my phone is paired with the actual unit. Now that they're connected, I should be able to go back to this and it should show up and maybe not. There we go. I had to allow it. It went into a notification saying it wanted to do something and I clicked yes and now it shows up in the app. You got a little Bluetooth icon upper right and now selected unit. It's connected to my unit with a check mark. So we are connected Now let's go to my owned maps and under Teleco there's a golden transfer button. Click on transfer. Do you want to continue? Estimated transfer time, 12 minutes. Confirm. And then this unit has, you have to have a micro SD card put in it. So I've got a 64 gigabyte micro SD card in this unit, a class 10 card. That's where the other maps are stored and that's where it wants to store this map. So I, it says card slot one, writable. Okay, I check that. And then I click on the transfer button. And now it is transferring from my phone to the Hummingbird unit. I just saw the unit just did some stuff and now it's transferring over. Now I've had times where the transfer would take an hour. Hopefully this won't take an hour. This unit, I've actually updated it. And I always would check for updates and update the unit if there are updates for it. So maybe it will transfer faster than that. It's already got a little bit over 10%, getting close to a quarter. It's transferring to it. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes and see what happens. There we go. The transfer is complete. I should be able to look at the map. Here we go to the HB chart, Hummingbird chart. Overlay options. And you see I got Fort Loudon, Milton Hill, Teleco. And Watts Bar, so Teleco, 2D map. Teleco right here. Right? Yep. And there we are, detailed map of Teleco. And you can see, I can only do one map at a time. So this is Watts Bar, this is Fort Loudon, And Fort Loudon ends right here, and Teleco begins. So now I can explore Teleco without running into anything. Teleco has some really shallow areas in certain places. So this will be an interesting, interesting place to fish in the future. Now, as you saw there, the most difficult part of this process is pairing the phone with the fish finder. Pairing Bluetooth with anything can be really tricky. So be aware that most of the problems are probably gonna be Bluetooth related. 
when you're dealing with all this. And I do know that I have one Bluetooth problem with my phone. I cannot get my phone to pair with my trolling motor. Minn Kota has an app that I can put on my phone that I can control the trolling motor with my phone and I've just, I haven't been able to get them to pair. And I'm not sure why. I've run into an issue with this trolling motor. This trolling motor has an actual touchscreen remote that comes with it. This touchscreen remote. And it goes through battery life really, really quick. That means if this is dead and my trolling motor is deployed, I'm going to have to manually stow it because I have no other way to make it stow itself. Although I probably could put the pedal in here. I had the pedal for it. And if I had the pedal in here, I could stow it with the pedal. Which I might actually do that right now because uh, that would be a good idea just in case, you know, this dies. That's stuff that happens when you're dealing with a lot of electronics. Now, if you have any questions about any of this, please leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it for you. And I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch my video. I really appreciate it. And if you would, hit that thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you next time. Hopefully this rain will stop and I'll get to go fishing again.